This is ERA News South Korea, I'm Lee, and we begin tonight with a legal development involving North Korea that spans across borders. In 2017, tragedy struck when Otto Warmbier, an American college student, died in a coma. After being detained in North Korea for allegedly stealing propaganda materials during a tour, now in a significant turn of events, Warmbier's parents have filed a lawsuit against North Korea in a U.S. court. Seeking accountability for their son's death, the lawsuit resulted in an astounding $500 million in compensation awarded to the family in 2018. Recently, Warmbier's parents managed to recover approximately $2.85 billion in North Korean funds. Frozen in U.S. banks, this came after a U.S. court decided to release the funds deposited by the Russian Far East Bank, an agency of North Korea's Air Koryo, to Warmbier's family. The release was made possible by a 2019 bill passed by the U.S. Congress guaranteeing victims' ownership of funds subject to sanctions against North Korea. However, the situation differs in South Korea. In a recent ruling, the court of Kim Sung Tai, a South Korean who defected to North Korea in 2001 after being taken there as a prisoner of war in 1950, ordered North Korea to pay compensation to three individuals, including Kim, Despite the victory, there is currently no proper mechanism in place to execute the compensation. Adding to the complexity, families of Korean prisoners of war, who won a similar case in 2020, are facing challenges in obtaining compensation. They filed a collection lawsuit against the Inter-Korean Economic and Cultural Cooperation Foundation, which manages copyright fees for North Korean broadcasting. Regrettably, the families of Korean prisoners of war face setbacks in both the initial and subsequent trials undersoaring the challenges in linking copyright fees to North Korean authority. The difficulty lies in establishing a clear connection between these fees and the North Korean government, complicating the pursuit of compensation for the affected family. Some are urging swift government intervention, especially considering the situation of elderly victims. Suggestions include using recovered funds to first compensate the elderly. Elderly and then having the South Korean administration claim North Korea's responsibility for indemnification. This legal saga underscores the intricate challenges in seeking justice and compensation in cases involving North Korea. With implications stretching from the United States to South Korea, 